Hear me. Good. Welcome to um, to Open Day 2011, and uh, thank you for your attention and interest in uh, world religions and theology. Um, as a way of introducing um, the subject and also of welcoming you to TCD, um, I'd like to say just a few words about religions and theology at TCD. Um, this is probably, not probably, it's the oldest subject um, in the college, right? Ever since 1592, theology has been studied. In terms of this being an arts and humanities subject, it's, um, been an, it's been on offer and it's been here within the arts block for the last 30 years. So it's a, it's a very well integrated subject. Um, my name is Ben Wold. Um, I am a um, lecturer in um, New Testament and Christian origins. And this is my colleague, Professor Yunker Kenny, in um, theology and ethics. Later on, in about 20 minutes, you'll have the opportunity, um, after a short question and answer time, to um, also hear um, Dr. Ann Fitzpatrick speak about Jewish and Islamic civilization. And she will also be representing lectures in that area, Zulika Rogers, Dr. Zulika Rogers, Dr. Leslie Grant, Ro Dr. Roja Fazali, and Roja Fazali. Um, for the moment, let me talk a little bit about the year structure or the, um, the program for the BA course, okay? So first of all, um, if you're interested in single honors, we could say that there are six courses that you would take in your first year. <coughs> of course, we're modularized, so that means that in the course of a year, you would take 12 different modules. At the same time, a lot of those um, courses and those, the, the, the 12 modules in six courses means more that the modules will follow a basic stream within that year, right? So that perhaps if you're interested in diaspora Judaism, for instance, not, it wouldn't be that example, but it would continue on through the year. Or um, theology and ethics, you would have two modules that would go for the length of the whole year. TSM, in the first year, you have three courses, a total of six modules. In the junior fresh year, right, in year one, um, most of our courses, not all of them, are assessed by one essay, that is each module is assessed by one essay and an annual examination. The essays tend to be about 1,500 words long and um, would be set towards the end of the semester usually. That gives you quite a bit of time to read around the subject, to be immersed to a number of different topics and think about what it is that you'd like to do in your second and third years. It's in our second and third years that the options begin to broaden out somewhat. And they don't just broaden out in terms of the subject matter. We also begin to introduce the possibility, it's by no means mandatory, um, for you to take language options. And the languages that we um, have on offer at present are Greek, Hebrew, and Arabic. And those then run for three years so that you have an introduction to Greek for an entire year intermediate Greek, advanced Greek, and that's the same for Hebrew, and that's the same for Arabic as well. Um, that allows you then to get into the subject um, a little bit more if you like. If you're thinking about further studies, for instance, you may want to invest in these. If you just like to read literature in its original language, this might be for you. These courses continue to be um, assessed um, mostly by an annual examination and an essay. As the years progress, the word limit changes, it rises. Okay. In our junior fresh, or in our junior sophister year, um, the junior sophister year, in terms of weighting and value, the junior sophister year is roughly worth about 30% of the value of your degree if you're single honors, right? So your uh, junior sophister year and your senior sophister year are then your important years. In terms of weighting, the senior sophister year has more weighting. In our senior sophister year, the way that we structure that is that you are required to write one dissertation, and you would do that dissertation in close conversation with a supervisor who is an expert in that area. And as you're writing that over the course of the whole year, it would be due at the very end of that academic year, you would meet maybe four or five times with that supervisor. At the same time, you would be able to take um, two modules out of a selection of modules each semester. So that is a total of four modules in the course of the senior sophister year. But what's very special about this year is, is that the class size changes 
so that now we're talking about small seminar groups of maybe six to 12 people and it's conversation based, right? Also, you don't have any essays that are due. You only have the annual examinations and the dissertation. And if you're wondering in terms of length about how long 15,000 words is, that's roughly 25, 30 pages, double space, okay? But you've then grown towards that as well. An important point about applying. If you're applying for single honors, the CAO points then are 380, and of course in the second round, 340. And as we've seen from publications today in terms of the entry um, for the TSM, um, we could say roughly 450 ending at, I believe it was 580, is that correct? That's right. Um, but this is a tip that we would like to give to anyone who is really interested in applying to this subject, and that's why um, I have the exclamation point in red. We would highly encourage you to apply for both single honor and TSM to ensure that you will get a place within the program, right? That is a strategy that you should have in place, even if you're mostly interested in doing TSM. To be sure that you're offered a place, also apply for the single honors. Professor Junker Kenny, do you want to add anything to that particular TSM point? TSM means you have a second subject, so you spend half of your time in another department. And if you want to do that, you can still decide to do so in second year. Um, but you should really put down the single honor course, which has all these disciplines and which is pretty sure to get you into Trinity. Whereas in the other subject, if you apply with the other subject, it might be that you just won't have enough points. If the points in English are well above 500, it's safer to put the whole single honor course in this way. Ten options. So. Good, okay, I think that's clear. Then <clears throat> let's go on to the next point. A lot of you may be wondering what do we do um, with, a, with a degree in religions and theology. Um, there are any number of things that you could do. We have, um, we, our students are enormously successful after they finish, maybe as sort of a broad point. And this is, um, this is a point that um, I think employers will take very seriously. And that is that by the time you're done studying in our program, you would have broad competency to address 3,000 years of intercultural and interreligious encounters, right? And in so doing, you're not simply gaining the ability to describe these different cultures and these di different religions, but also analytically engaging with them from a number of different perspectives, whether that be from, say, a sociological perspective or a philosophical perspective, a theological perspective, or a historical perspective, right? And then those skills are understood to be broadly um, transferable. And it's these transferable skills that employers understand students have gained when they take an arts and humanities degree in general. And that's no different for a course like ours. But let me give you a few specific examples. We've had students go on to go into business, for instance, at Willis Corporation in London. We've also had people that have gone on to work in the Department of Education, the National Council for Curriculum Assessment, We've also had people go on to study law, and of course that makes sense because so much of what we do is based in text. And when we study text, a lot of it connects to legal issues in antiquity that can then be applied to the present. We have people that have gone on to do publishing. Of course, you can imagine that in media and journalism, they need experts who understand both the contemporary as well as the historical religions that affect our lives and societies today. We also have people that go on to um, take degrees in uh, museums uh, for, um, for curation, for instance, to work in museums. We have people who go on to human resources, and of course, um, people that go on to do teaching um, RE at secondary school. And of course, we have people who go on to work at universities. We have um, people who have graduated from our program here at TCD, who teach in the Department of Religions and Theology here at Trinity College today, right? But we also have students that have gone on to the health sector, and we have people working in Trinity who are not doing academic work either. Okay, let me transition quickly. I was trained in biblical studies, and as part of that, a very important part of that, I've gone on to publish on the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so I've, I'm very much interested in the archeology span and the textual traditions that come from this discovery in 1947 alongside the Dead Sea. And that's something that I would teach on as part of setting early Christian literature within its cultural context. 
I just want to make a couple of points quickly before I hand it over to Professor Yonker Kenny. Of course, we know that the Chester Beatty Library has um, a great number of ancient texts um, that people from all over the world come to see. For instance, we have the oldest fragments <coughs> of the Book of Revelation in the world just down the street from Trinity College. That allows me then to say to you that when we think about ancient texts, we approach them um, with questions about methodology in mind, and those methodological questions then um, allow us to think about literary theory, and then we think also about the languages themselves, which I've already spoken about, is an option. And then I'll transition very quickly to the Dead Sea Scrolls, but this is only an example of thinking about context. So that when we're thinking about, in terms of biblical studies, ancient, um, um, ancient studies, we're going beyond the text and we're thinking about material culture, we're thinking about archaeology, but we're also thinking about religions and religious milieus much more broadly than you would find in strictly reading an ancient um, biblical text. That is, we're thinking about the Greco-Roman world, we're thinking about the broader Jewish world, and we can continue to expand. All of that then can be um, applied to er other areas of study as well. I point to it because it's one of my areas of specialty. So um, I will then turn it over to Professor Yonker Kenny, who will be speaking about theology and ethics. So you've already got an impression how many disciplines are involved in this area. I want to say something about theology and ethics. What is theological studies? What do you do in theology? Well, basically, you have a look at this basic foundational document of the Bible in its history of reception in Western culture. And one can say that Western culture is really also the culture of modernity that has spread globally now. So it is about the interactions between this document and with the cultures in which it was translated and which it helped shape. So, so major transitions in our self-understanding will be looked at major turning points in cultural self-understandings that came about through the interaction of biblical um, texts with the cultures around them. So you'll be experts on that. In the end, you'll be able to say, well, how come that modernity is so, Im so interested in the value of work? Well, actually, that started, you could say, in the fifth century. It wasn't in Greek philosophy. The highest stage of being was contemplative. Work didn't have a spiritual or a kind of value, normative value. For us, it does. But, but that transition really happened early in the history of the reception of the Bible. So all these, if you want, turning points, all these controversies that were um, that happened through the encounter with the new cultures, we'll be having a look at them. And therefore, we'll ha be having a look at the major thinkers who brought things forward, who were already in dialogue also with the other monotheisms of the time, namely Judaism and Islam. So you'll hear about the Middle Ages already in their interreligious dialogue. So we'll have a, therefore, you'll be in the end very well acquainted with the origins of generally Europe's cultural values that come from the encounter of monotheism with Greek philosophy. And we'll also deal with current cultural and ethical challenges such as, of course, genetic engineering, cloning, um, questions about the environment, about climate change and things like that. We'll be talking about how should religions speak in the public realm? What language should they speak? Should they talk about dignity, about integrity of nature, or should they talk about us being made in the image of God and this being creation? So all these different approaches and different perspectives on these questions will be debated. It's a non-denominational course, which means that the thinkers of the different Christian traditions of the West will be uh, studied and we'll see kind of the continuity of their thinking. Um, thirdly, religious studies plays a role in our course. We explore religion also as a cultural force that has shaped political history, worldviews, <coughs> practices, and institutions. I mean, it's not everywhere that universities, for instance, came to be. University is one institution that, that has arisen and that had a reason behind it arising. 
religious studies has various disciplines that contribute to it, and in each discipline you have different approaches. So it's not just one approach in philosophy, sociology, psychology, history, cultural studies, or anthropology. We'll be studying the key thinkers, such as Mircea Eliade, Max Weber, Durkheim. We'll be having a look at them, and you'll find out what their view is of what religion is in human society. So those classical authors will be studied and the current questions of how do world religions and theology relate, for instance, to democracy. So at the end, you, you'll have a thorough founding based on seminal thinkers um, on these questions which are really so important. It's one of the most, I mean, Tony Blair said, religion is one of the most important questions for the 21st century. And clearly, in a globalizing world, this is a competence that is really utterly relevant. It's one of the best competences to have uh, in the humanities. And it brings together subjects that, were, um, well, that you can study on their own in, in other departments, but we treat them all uh, in this department. OK, so that's the three parts of our course. Any questions? Can go back over to the sound after. Um, yeah. Please do come visit us at the center afterwards if you have any questions. And um Okay, is that okay? You we're in the dining hall on the right hand side. So if you have more specific questions to ask us or our students, you're very welcome to do so. And now you'll find out from Dr. Ann Fitzpatrick about Jewish and Islamic civilizations. Okay. Um, the relevance of the course Jewish Islamic Civilizations, just uh, as you can see on this, we have the Pransky Mosque here. Many people will have visited the Pransky Mosque. We have the synagogue in Terenur, the more orthodox synagogue in Terenur, and the old synagogue in Terenur, uh, and Adelaide Road, which is closed now. So Irish society now is becoming increasingly diverse, especially the uh, Muslim population. It has become um, very large, as you know, and many of the, the students in first year now, in, in our current first year, are actually of Middle Eastern backgrounds and some of them of um, Muslim backgrounds. So it's very important in terms of how we uh, you know, educate ourselves in this day and age that we take account of the changing demographic in Ireland and the diversity um, of our society. Whatever career you go into, you're going to encounter different cultures in Ireland now, and increasingly so. So we begin with the ancient world, and this is a map of the ancient Near East here. We begin with to explore the cultural origins, the historical origins, and the cultural origins of Judaism, and inevitably Christianity, which grows out of, of, of Judaism, and Islam. So we start around 2000 BC, so the period we go from 2000 BC <coughs> right up to the present. Um, lots of our focus, of course, is on um, uh, Syria and Palestine, um, because that's obviously the cradle of um, Jewish civilization. And when you look at the modern Middle East, you can see that this area, which saw the emergence of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, is still at the center of you know, what's happening in our world now. We have the Arab Spring going on now all over the Middle East. Huge changes taking place and coming really out of the values of Islam. We're very familiar, of course, with the idea of clash of civilizations and Islam being a problem for a West for the West, but actually what we're seeing now in the Middle East is Islam speaking for itself, Muslims speaking for themselves and talking about what they want in terms of human rights, etc. And one of the lecturers in the course Jewish Islamic Civilizations is Iranian, uh, came here when she was 10 or 11 years of age, and her area is um, human rights. She teaches the courses on human rights, a particular emphasis, of course, on human rights in the Middle East. So an example of the ancient part of the course comes from this, this slide here shows um, an island on the Nile River. Um, it's called the Island of Elephantine. And around 550 BC, about 550 years before the birth of Jesus, um, there was a Jewish community living on this island alongside Egyptian neighbors. Um, 
They worked as professional soldiers for the Persians who ruled Egypt in this period. And this site here shows the remains of their village, the remains of the Jewish village, 550 years before Jesus. We see the Jews living outside of the land of Israel in Egypt, also living in this period in modern day Iraq and Iran. So there is an extraordinary history of the Jewish people to be traced from the ancient world right up until the present. This is an archaic form of Hebrew writing. Um, and it's actually um, a letter from a woman living in Egypt around 550 BC confer confirming the divorce uh, from her husband. So it's an extraordinary document from daily life. And we've lots of documents like that from Egypt about the Jews. I don't know if any of you are taking classics or ancient history syllabus, but um, it would be a very similar kind of approach to that. This is um, a depiction of ancient Arabs. And of course, Arabs and um, Israelites, or modern day Israelis, have been neighbors for 3,000 years. And it's only been very occasionally that the relations between them have been good relations. And you can see that now in the modern Middle East, the conflict there. So we also look at the history of the Arabs in the ancient world. And we follow that through the medieval period right up until the present. Again, in terms of Jewish studies, um, this picture here shows the great synagogue in Warsaw, um, which is evidence of one of the most famous buildings in the city of Warsaw in its day. And this was evidence of a thriving European Jewry, which had existed there in Warsaw since the 17th century. And that particular synagogue, of course, no longer exists. It was blown up by the SS in 1943. Um, and following that, of course, the Jewish population of Warsaw um, was decimated. And this shows the arrest of the Jews um, of Warsaw. Um, Again, we have a course on the city of Jerusalem from the, from the um, ancient uh, world right up onto the present. And again, you know, Jerusalem is symbolically the holy city for um, three of the world religions, and yet it is very much a contested city. On the right-hand side of the slide here, you, say, uh, you see Jews praying at the temple wall, the wailing wall in Jerusalem, and on the left-hand side, you see the other side of Jerusalem, Palestinian um, population of Jerusalem. And you can see the, the contrasting um, cultures there and values. Um, and so we look at that, we look at the current um, day uh, conflict. Although I have to say we spend more time on, on, on Jews in Europe, for example, on the Holocaust, than we do on um, uh, modern, the modern Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. And then again, it's, it's a very timely um, uh, I think degree to be taken because of the Arab Spring, because of these huge transitions which are going to have global impact, really, um, in the next sort of, um, well, for, for your generation, there's going to be a huge impact of these um, uh, uprisings in the Middle East, and it remains to be seen what the impact of those is going to be. So, a quick view of the first year, I'm very um, pressed for time, and we have a couple of minutes left. Um, but, to give you an idea, the first year, it's a TSM, so you take it with another subject. From 2013, if you're in fifth year now, 2013, there will be a single honours um, in Middle Eastern studies, but if, if you're in sixth year now, you're not going to be on time for that one. And the points for that could be about 380. For this TSM, it's up in the 400s. Depending on what you combine it with, it's either early 400s, mid 400s, late 400s. But in the first year, you take three courses. Um, the first one is Jewish and Christian origins in the Bible, which begins with the ancient world. Um, during a period when the Bible was circulated orally, was passed on orally, before society were very literate. Uh, so we look a lot at ancient Near Eastern history there, and it's an extraordinarily interesting course, actually, to set the Jewish traditions in that context, looking at the Babylonian world, at the Persian world, um, and then at the Greek and Roman world. Then we have Introduction to Jewish Civilization, which again introduces you to the, the symbols of the Jewish religion, but also the history and culture of Jews right up to the present time looking at art and music and literature and science and the contribution um, of um, uh, Jewish people to those things uh, right up to modern day. Then we have Introduction to Islamic Civilization. Again, starts with the origins of Islam, looks at the central symbols of Islam, um, and comes right up to discuss problems of the present, such as um, Islam, in, Islam in Europe and Islam in Ireland. Out of those three courses, two have end of year exams and one is assessed, continual assessment through the year. People always ask that question, so I just thought I'd tell you that now about exam. Second and third year options, uh, again, two end of year exams, one continual assessment. Courses there, Islam in Europe, um, very contemporary, very important discussion to have. Jews in European society from 1750, 
right up through the Holocaust and right up until the present. Um, ancient empire, if you like ancient history. Uh, Persia, Greece, Rome, and the Jews. The Jews were ruled by all of these empires uh, for a few centuries. Um, and it shows you the history and the development of the Jewish religion and the Jewish culture in those contexts where they actually live under imperial rule. It shows you how Jewish culture and Jewish religious ideas mixed, for example, with Greek and Roman ideas about the gods. The next course is a dispersion of the, looks at the dispersion of the Jews from the 6th century, from about 600 BC, when the Jews were first deported from Jerusalem and sent to live in the cities of Babylon. That was the first deportation of the Jews, uh, right up through the 1st century, when there were further deportations of the Jews from, their, from Judah and from Jerusalem, right until the present day, and again, um, through the Holocaust, the settlement of the Jews in America. All of those kind of themes come into that. Jews and Muslims in the medieval world. The medieval world is an extraordinarily um, interesting context to look really not just at Jews and Muslims, but also at Christians. And the interactions between Jews, Muslims, and Christians, particularly in Spain, really do set an example for us in the modern period of how uh, we can engage with each other's cultures. Uh, next, of course, early Jewish thought and history. Then you have the option of languages, which can be very important for careers, particularly, I would have to say, um, Arabic. Arabic. We have huge classes of, of students taking Arabic now. Um, people from other courses, people who are taking politics, come in and they take the Arabic in the department because, of course, it does put you on a different level in terms of careers if you have Arabic, even if you're going to go into business, if you're going into social services, if you're going into education, if you're going into media, journalism, etc. It is um, um, quite a skill to have. It, it puts you, I think, on a completely different footing. Um, to journalists, educators who don't have that. And um, then um, we're introducing next year uh, Persian. There's about 6,000 people in Dublin now speak Persian. So it's not as insignificant a language as you might think. And then fourth year options, Arabs, Holocaust representation, the Bible and popular culture, human rights, and then of course um, um, Jerusalem from the past right up until the present day. Broadening your experience in Trinity, as with all arts programs, you can take um, the broad curriculum course, the second one here, where you, if, rather than one of the courses in our department, you can take a modern language, you can take a course in philosophy, film studies, etc. We also have study trips every year. So far we've been to Berlin, we've been to Poland, we've been to Spain, and in terms of careers, I think um, it's pretty obvious what you can do. Journalism, media, um, careers in the diplomatic service, and the civil service, etc. Now, I had to run through things there next week for coming in. If anybody would like to uh, come up with some questions, the Winery Museum on the fifth floor, room 5039, if you follow the staircase numbers, you'll find room 5039, and I'd be very glad um, to take any further questions that you might have if you want to come up, even if there's only one of you wants to come up. However many you are, you'd be very welcome to come up. Okay, uh, leaflets here if anybody would like them, but I'll see you upstairs, hopefully.